Bob Bowlesby went big with his tortious interference claim toward ESPN back, shoot, over a month ago. Crazy how time flies. But we haven't heard much since then. So what could be happening? Why are things silent? And what does this mean in the end for the Big 12? What is the best case scenario? Those are some questions that are going to be answered here today in this video. Welcome into the channel. I am John Kurtz. If you have not subscribed, please consider clicking the subscribe button and turning the alert bell on. I talk college football every day on this channel. Right now, that means conference realignment every day here on this channel because I try to give the Big 12 a voice. So you're about to hear from Curry Sexton, who joins my radio show on a regular basis. Now, he's a former K-State wide receiver. He was K-State's number two wideout who played with Tyler Lockett back in those days, if that gives you a point of reference. He is now an attorney in the Kansas City area and is just a very bright guy. And he has the right combination here of sports acumen, sports knowledge, as well as the legal acumen to go along with it. And I had a chance to ask him about what he feels about where this case could be going, tortious interference against ESPN, how tough that would actually be to prove, why things might be silent right now, and some other great insight on this front. So without further ado, here is a clip from my daily radio show, which you can find on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Just search The Game, K-M-A-N. Here is Curry Sexton on what may be happening with the Big 12 and ESPN. We had you on right when the Big 12 cease and desist, torches interference, all of that was really hot and heavy. Um, wh where are you at with that right now? We haven't heard much about that, which I guess is to be expected, I would think, to just try and keep all of this stuff behind closed doors. You're not going to want to come out publicly with any information that you might have. But wh what kind of a case do you think still is there potentially for, for the Big 12 and Bob Bowlesby against ESPN? Yeah, I still think that there's there's got to be a there's got to be a legitimate case there, just based on the you know the strength of that that cease and desist letter he wrote, and just some of the some of the information that came to light either before or after that that letter coming out um, to the public. Um, I, I do think that you know a lot of times where there's smoke, there's fire, and, and unfortunately for for those who are interested in, in the outcome. Um, the legal process is incredibly slow, especially especially during and because of this pandemic. And so I think it's it's very likely that we won't see any activity on that you know on that front for for quite some time. Um, I, I do think that um, you know there's probably a little bit of slow playing involved from all the from all the parties in, you know from all the parties involved just because you have Texas and Oklahoma bouncing um, and in creating these issues and trying to get out from underneath these large buyout payments that, that they're contractually obligated to make. But at the same time, you have the Big 12, you know, the remaining eight trying to save themselves. And so while, while, while slow, I think the Big 12 has to slow play it to make sure that they don't, that they don't miss out on those, on those buyout payments. Um, they're all, they also have to be working behind the scenes to, to, to make sure that they're, they're all going to be not going to be left in the dust. So I think that there's a lot of reasons why we're probably not hearing anything on that front. But I do think that, that based on what we've heard about, you know, that OU and Texas and and, and, the, and and the way that they were engaged with each other, you know, in the last year regarding leaving the Big 12 and ESPN's involvement and, and all of the realignment stuff, I do think there's there's probably a lot there. Um, and I imagine if, if things don't settle out of court that there'll be lawsuits filed just because of the, just because of the large amount of money at, at you know, at issue here. So um, probably won't hear much, I imagine, especially during the season, but I, I do think that, it's, that the issue is not dead. Well, I know that, you know, I've heard some say, like, tortious interference can be really hard to, to prove. Uh, like, how how blatant does a smoking gun, so to speak, need to be in this case for, for them to, to win or have a really legitimate chance here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, it, you know, proving any proving anything can be difficult, but, but I do think that I don't think proving proving tortious interference doesn't isn't necessarily harder than proving a breach of contract. I mean, obviously, if you have a clear breach, that's 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 more cut and dry than maybe alleging tortious interference. But if there are any you know emails or text messages out there, which I have an incredibly hard time believing there's not, where you know ESPN reps um, and reps of the AAC and, and, and Oklahoma and Texas or whomever um, talking about the plans for realignment, the plans to, you know, try to get the AAC to, to poach the remaining eight. Um, I mean, that, that, there's your smoking gun. And I just think that, you know, some some people are sophisticated. Some people keep communications like that to, to you know, oral communication um, to, to 
avoid creating a paper trail, but I do think that at the end of the day, most people still rely on text message and email. And so there's got to be a number of, you know, communications out there where, where people are, are discussing the, the plan for realignment. So, um, tortious interference can be hard to prove. A lot of stuff, you know, in the civil context with that, that amount of money on the line, it's hard to prove. But, um, I would guess that based on Bull's piece, piece in the fifth letter, that they have some, that they have some hard evidence that, that may uh, be in that thing. I don't really appreciate Curry's insight there. Again, to find the daily radio show, it's the game, KMAN. Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever it is that you find your podcast. You can also follow me on Twitter, at JL Kurtz. Hit me up on TikTok, John Kurtz Show. It's John Kurtz Show on Instagram as well. Lots of places to find my content. That's all going to be in the description here of this video as well. All right. Enjoy the first weekend of college football, and I will talk to you guys soon.